Hey there, welcome to the Joyful Rebels podcast. We've got Claire and Donna here, and you're listening to The Joyful Rebels Strike Back Against Whack Messages, Part 2. <laughs> still still getting a kick out of that title. Uh, so if you recall, we are doing the Summer of Confidence. We hope that you've joined our group. If not, go in the show notes, go to our Facebook page, join the group. It's free, it's open, and we would love to connect with you. But it's dealing with confidence. And so if we take a few steps back, we wanted to talk about some messages that we get bombarded with all the time that when you really focus on it, they're gonna do something to our confidence. More than likely, they're gonna affect our confidence negatively. So that first message that we talked about was this idea that you're superwoman and you need to do it all. Uh, and we talked about how that's unrealistic. The second message that we addressed, the whack message was, I need alcohol, I need a glass of wine to relax, to blow off steam, to get more chatty and do small talk. And so hopefully you had a quiet moment during this past week to just reflect and evaluate what your relationship looks like with alcohol. Now we're gonna jump into number three. So mom, do you wanna take us away with whack message number three? <laughs> I love this one so much. I love these all. I love that they're called whack because they are, because it's it's a silly word because these messages are pervasive. They're everywhere and they are false. So mm-hmm. the third one is that really strikes home for me is for the love of God, whatever you do, don't age. Chase youth with whatever means you have with your money, with your time, with your mindset, with everything else. It's like, it's a bad thing to get older and, and everything falls apart and your life isn't as fun as it was in whatever time frame you've, you know, put into like a holding pattern. And the reason why it's so bad and it erodes is maybe kind of funny. Like, like Donna, we don't need you to, to tell us why that would feel bad, but think about it. Um, Not only does it just absolutely excavate and take the foundation out of your confidence, because let's face it, if you're not aging, the alternative is that you're dead. Mm. Okay, so that's what's on the line here. But then let's look at all the expense it is for whatever. I mean, I'm not, not against like taking care of yourself. Again, taking care of yourself is a continuum. But when we really invest like big money to make sure that we don't look any different, A, I don't think that that's reality. I think we are going to look different. And that's just part of how bodies age, like bodies do that. Uh, So it costs a lot of money. But the mind thing is what really flips me out because when, and I have it myself too, so I'm not pointing fingers because anything I'm saying I'm living with too, the whole like, uh, sucks to get old. And that when I hear women and my peers, when we're hanging out and talking and somebody says that, it's like, gotta stop you on that. Like it starts here. Like, I am grateful that I'm getting older, especially for losing my mom at an age that's younger than I am. Okay. I'm like, cool. Uh, I lost a sister at this age as well. Like, this is a big deal to keep being healthy and age. And I look at it like with a curiosity, like, what can it look like? I want to be around people that are defying the odds. So the the message that we get, and, you, and it's everywhere. I, I don't think I need to list that out, but it is you know, notice if you've had any moments where that dialogue, that old dialogue, which could have come from a long time ago, we've gotten messages where uh, getting older uh, as we were growing up might not have been parsed out enough to be able to talk about it. But now the light is shining on it. You're just going to bring awareness to this message. Like, think about it. This is, uh, we're working on self-love and acceptance and gratitude And that continues. It just gives us more time to do it as we grow older. We shift the mindset from, uh, you know, things are bad that are happening to if we're growth mindset, we're still learning. Like, and in many cultures, growing older means wisdom. Mm -hmm. Like you get a chance to go like, I have seen enough data points in the rear view mirror that I can put them together as a pattern. And then maybe we could share that wisdom with each other. Instead of having it be where like not so great things happen, we learn things. We learn things. We know we can change our brain. We're neuroplasticity. We can learn new things. And that all is still malleable regardless of our age. But it's up to us to do that. And another one that has really been top of mind for me is strength training. Mm-hmm. Like if we want to stay uh, vital and and confident and continue to grow. We're investing in our muscular system, feeds our brain, and we are in the world, showing up in the world. 
and debunking this myth every time we take a breath. And I think that's super cool. Because again, as a rebel, I want to take what is commonly accepted and swallowed as being truth and say, like, I challenge you. That has not been my experience. And the best way to do that, that I'm finding in this stage, is to live my life in a way where I'm vibrant, I have vitality, I'm taking care of myself, which even that is a bold act. That's where Joyful Rebels came from, like taking care of yourself. It's like, oh, aren't you supposed to go last? I don't (laughs) think so. I think we had that flipped around. Mm -hmm. So the ageism thing, and that is pervasive, whether you're looking at advertising, messages and movies, you know, how we see people, but ultimately what we're concerned with in Joyful Rebels is how we see ourselves. And it starts with us. So knowing ourselves and knowing that we will get older, what happens if we shifted that to a gift? What happened if we shift the mindset to look for the good things that happen instead of what we call it's falling apart? There's going to be changes to our physical body and our structure, but we heal, we grow, we learn something from those experiences and we keep going. So I don't know, Claire, like that's what I love. We have two different generations here. You know, I'm 61, Claire, you're 60, 36, maybe. 36. Oh my God. Okay. But you get like, do you feel that at your age? You know, it's interesting because even a couple years ago, I would say no. Like, I'm aware of like the stereotypical of like, oh, aging bad, you know, ageism. Um, But I thought maybe naively I was immune to it. And just even without intentionally focusing on it, that messaging does start to creep in. You know, I keep my gaze on a sponsored post for a skin product too long. And then all of my feed is, oh, you need this, you need this yeah. now. So, I mean, I think it gets exacerbated by consuming it in, in videos and social media. But I mean, it's even, that's the type of stereotypes, you know, you're getting older is bad or you're boring or you're not as much use. I mean, my kids watch some, you know, maybe questionable cartoons, but they'll say to me, you know, because when you're eight and nine, 36 is like a hundred, you know? So, oh, and you're really old. And you talked about mom shifting your mindset. And I think, you know, shifting the language around it. Cause I will immediately say, I don't feel bad. I don't look, do you said that? Which I feel like maybe might be a normal response, you know, or, or people might respond that way. I'm like, I love that. Thank you. I was like, I want to get older. Cause like you said, realistically, you're either getting older or you're not because you're dead. So it is a gift. Like you said, I'm going to echo that it is a gift to get older and the wisdom that comes with it. And for so long, I think that's just been, what's been that pervasive messaging that, oh no, you don't want to look older because when you're older, you're not as much use, you're, you're weak, you're not contributing as much. And we know that that's whack. And so starting it now, and even with my kids, no, like, this is awesome. Like I, I love getting older, all these things I'm learning about myself. There is some confidence that comes with just being older and not caring so much. Like when I hear now about the elementary school school drama, like they're not even in middle school yet. And just remembering when that was, that felt so important. And now when you've got more years, you have more of that perspective. Um, I think it's interesting, Julia Louis Dreyfus, you know, Elaine Mm -hmm. from Seinfeld, she Mm -hmm. has a new podcast called Wiser Than Me. And she solely interviews older women in showbiz for what they've Mm. learned and accumulated along the way, because that is absolutely an industry where when you're older, you get kind of, you know, close the door. So she just goes and interviews women who have persisted and what they've learned, acknowledging that there's so much to learn. It's such an untapped resource, if you think about it, to learn from women who have aged. So speaking of a resource, mom, I definitely look to you. Like you are someone who shines your light. You are someone who moves. I like where your head's at and your priorities are when we talked about mentors Mm -hmm. and role models. So to have someone again, who's maybe a little bit further down the path that you can look up to is so important. And if I were to start letting myself feel bad about some of the wrinkles that I'm seeing or not being able to, you know, do cartwheels the same as I could when I was younger, um, then you just shift that mindset. But look what I can do now. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if I really wanted to work on cartwheels, like I probably could, like some of it's just, I haven't done it in a while. So shifting the mindset. So what's the to do, right? You're shifting your mindset, the language that you're using, and can you view that aging as a gift? So that's, that's something that I'm glad that I'm thinking about now and will continue to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So number four, our last whack message is 
I'm going to be happy if I lose that last five pounds. I would be so much happier if I look like so-and-so on Instagram um, or anything external. I'd be so happy once I get that promotion. So I would like to take this and talk about body image, but you know, why is this bad? We think we're holding on to, we're not going to let ourselves feel happiness until we get to some goal. And right off the bat, like, is the goal even realistic? for one thing, or are we just chasing something that we're never going to get to? And that is when we talked about happiness, that's one of the things to work on is, can you not change your circumstances and be happy with where you're at now? Because if you're always chasing something, guess what? With that mindset, if you reach that goal that you set, but you had that mindset that happiness would come more than likely, oh, wait, no. I actually mean I needed to do this to be happy because that's the mindset that you have. It's something that you're chasing instead of something mm -hmm. that you're experiencing right now. And for me, I really resonate with the, I'll be happy if I lose that last X number of pounds because body image is just something, you know, as a woman, mm -hmm. it's, I feel like it's been something that I've dealt with since I was a little girl. And it's something that I am trying really hard to be healthy, body positive, or even body neutral, body image neutral with my kids. Like how you look is how you look. Same thing with the aging. Like, let's just be happy and grateful that we have a body, right? Because if we don't, you know, we're not here, we're not alive. So, but for me personally, recently it's been moving away from the scale. Like, I don't know if you're listening, if you put too much stock in that number and I've had times before where I saw a number and I was feeling like fine. And then I saw a number and it made me feel a different way. Like what? And then it affected like everything, like it, my mood, my body language, like everything just felt so down. And like, how dare that little machine with the little batteries, like do that to me. Like I need to take my power back. So what can we do about it? If we're chasing external happiness, it's that awareness, first of all, that happiness comes from being okay with what's going on right now. If you're chasing it, you're probably never going to find it. Secondly, if it is something like, I want to lose that last five pounds, sometimes what I do is I just, I'm reflecting. Let me ask myself why. Well, because I want to be the healthiest version of myself. Well, let's really try and look at this objectively because oftentimes, you guys, the leanest that we are is not our healthiest. It's this mm -hmm. not our healthiest. And especially mentally and emotionally, if you have to put yourself in a certain way, um, restriction to look a certain way, that's probably not going to be your happiest or even your healthiest life. So if my goal was I want to be healthy, let's maybe think of some better goals. Let's talk about strength training. And this is really where been my, my focus has been because, again, tying it back to the aging conversation, we know mm -hmm. now if you want to have your best ability, um, healthiest body that you can have when you're older, it's to strength train. It's that time of muscle under tension that actually is directly correlated to bone health when it gets down to it at yep. the cellular level and most fatal injuries and injuries in general in the elderly population have to deal with broken bones. And so if you're actually looking at when I'm 90, what do I want to be able to do and how do I want to feel then adding in strength training and flexibility training is so important. So I'm going to shift my mindset from this number that this machine is spitting out at me to maybe I want to do so many reps of a bicep curl at this weight. Like again, just shifting it to what can my body do? Not what is this kind of arbitrary number about, you know, what's on my insides today. So it has, I think it's one of those things that contributed to me feeling happier and better in my body. And it just took that shift from, again, why do I care about that? Well, if I'm really concerned about being the healthiest I can be, I think I need to re revisit what my goals were mm -hmm. and actually find goals like rooted in science that are related to what a healthy body, you know, can and should do. And so looking externally for that happiness, you know, let's revisit it again, your to do, you know, what do I really want and why? And are these goals really lining up with that? Where does mm. that land with you, mom? Okay. There's a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. I'm like, no, it, tip of the iceberg it, here. <laughs> I, and I love that it's, it's provocative too. So it really challenges. If, if you want to be challenged, uh, you know, kind of look for that in life, which I think is a really healthy tension, healthy push pull because comfort is, is, can be really damaging. Um, that being said, what I heard from you, Claire, as we wrap it up today is that, you know, we've got some old ideas on how things can look externally, 
to make us feel better, to add to our confidence. And the, the image that came to me was um, when we look externally, the finish line keeps moving. Mm -hmm. So the finish line keeps moving, which means we're never going to get it. It's like whack-a-mole. I got it over here, but really it needs to be over there. It's just unfulfilling. It's not true. It's not sustainable. And it's false. It's a lie. So I look at that and, and then I thought, okay, what can I do? So I'm going to add to what you said, Claire, to, to examine, like if we're looking at something external and what I'm learning, again, work in progress, that when I picture how I want to be, and you're right, if we're, if we're, I love how that ties into like, you know, the age thing too. I want to picture, what does that look like? when I'm older, you know, how can I shift it from an external thing like strength training? What would that do for me? Uh, I don't have a picture or a static image. I think in videos, images. And when we think in 3D, like what would the situation look like? Who's in the situation with me? Are there any smells? Are there any colors? Are there any, like, what am I doing? Am I, you know, on, on a yoga mat in a, in a park or whatever? And when there's a video and the images are moving, it's stickier in our brains. Like we know that, like we know from science that a, a, a two-dimensional, like you just see something as, as a picture, it makes an impression. The video and you see it come to life that you've created, that's how we change and uproot some of this distorted or older thinking or external, like I'm going to be happier, I'm going to have more confidence when, fill in the blank. Mm. So let's combat things with having an imagination. What does it look like? Mm. What do I want it to look like? You know, I love when I see older women with like just totally gray hair and pixie haircuts. And they're like, I'm just rocking this thing. And they're fit and they're healthy. And they're, and that that's not saying that's a size that has nothing to do with a size or a look. It's a condition and a mindset and an integration of all of this that creates a vitality, this vitality that comes out for them. Like they are alive. You can tell when you meet people like that, right? You're like, yo, they're doing something. They're doing something and it's all coming together. And you're like, I don't know what it is, but I want more. And so I encourage all of us and me as well, that I'm going to continue to think in videos of how I want things to look mm -hmm. internally and not look at externally to validate and or celebrate because that's false too. So even the number on the scale when it was good and you're like, I feel really good. That, that wasn't even true either. That mm -hmm. just meant that you probably went to the bathroom before you got on the scale. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> So that's a lot. That's a lot. And uh, I, I love the conversation. I love thinking counter or just peeking behind the curtain. Uh -huh. And and that is what a joyful rebel is. They're not doing it from an angry stance or just a, like, me, you know, coming at it with this energy that's bitter. It's curious. And I'm like, what does it look like? I challenge it because I feel like there's more. I know there's some messages that we're getting that you know, like, I love it that we call it whack. There's probably about 50 million more, but let's start with some of those big ones so that we just start uh, dismantling some of the stuff that's not working and making us feel bad and making us uh, undercutting our confidence. Because here's the thing, we deserve to be confident, happy, have peace and ease in our lives, feel like we're contributing, we're using our gifts. We deserve that. And we are enough already in wow. here. And all we got to do is get to know ourselves in this season to start that way of living and things compound. So getting there, like you start thinking about it, but being able to stay there in each season, um, it doesn't take as much work because you're already doing the things. You're already <laughs> thinking about what it looks like later. So know that if you spend a little bit of energy now, you're going to give yourself some peace and ease later. I don't know, Claire, you got anything else on Joyful Rebels or are we just like, whoo, that's a lot to think about this week. <laughs> that's a lot to think about this week and last week. And we are so grateful that you're in this conversation with us. And we hope that, again, we're, we're peeking behind the curtain here on some of these things. Just because all the masses are doing or thinking a certain way doesn't mean that we have to because we are Joyful Rebels and we're going to do what works for us. And once we figure that out, we're going to share and shine our light because you know what? There's room for all of us to be shining. So any comments or feedback, leave them. We love to hear from you until next time, Rebels.